Clyde Valley in Northumberland, election night's first shock result. When this seat turned blue, the die was cast. Boris Johnson wasn't just going to take Labour's red wall, he was going to wipe it out. For seven decades, Blythe Valley has returned a Labour MP to Westminster, but no more. This old mining seat is Boris Johnson's territory now, and that land grab stretches from coast to coast. From Blythe to Blackpool South, to Bury to Bishop Auckland, to Bolsover, and that's just the bees. Dozens of Labour seats turn Tory. Britain's political map has literally been redrawn. And the big question is, can Labour win their heartlands back? So, Peter, basically, I just need it... It's like, on, like, literally, just on my eyebrows like that. Yeah. Like, literally... Yeah, I, you know, it shall shut up now. There's one thing business owner Peter wanted from this election, Brexit. Well, there are times she thought it might never happen. Oh, yeah, Craigie, three and a half years down the lane. I'm thinking, why have a referendum if you're not going to work on it and do it? <laughs> when, when, uh, when they called the election, were you annoyed or were you glad because you thought it was going to get sorted out now? Well, yeah. Um, that's all I wanted. Just all, the whole thing needed sorting out. Yeah. It's perfect. I'm, I'm reborn. Thank you. <laughs> There was only one man Peter trusted to get Brexit over the line. And did you vote Conservative this time? Yes, then? I did. I, it's the first time I've done it. And uh, but I was just fed up and sick of the way politics was going. And I thought, if anybody's going to get we're out, Boris Johnson will get we're out. How mm. important to you was? The fact that Jeremy Corbyn led the Labour Party was that a problem for you when you were thinking about how to vote? Oh, yeah. Um, I didn't like him. And I just thought... You couldn't no. see him as Prime Minister? Oh, no, no. Like I say, I wouldn't let him run the bus, never mind the country. There's big business here too. It's 105 tonnes, yep. Brendan founded a manufacturing company here in Blythe. He thinks the region has more to offer. So you quite liked Boris Johnson's message about unleashing Britain's potential. You thought that that was maybe the right way to go. We had a vote on Brexit. It is what it is. Uh, we need to move on. Um, and I think the key importance for us as a company and for a region is, I think, just about ambition. Mm. And we have a huge amount. Uh, we can either decide to look back to the past or we can look forward to the future. We've got a huge amount to gain. A bit further south to County Durham, the key target seat of Bishop Auckland turned Tory too, emphatically. Sam's family have been here for over a century, their cafe a fixture of the local community. He saw this coming. I was a vote leaver. And the bottom line is, this country voted to leave. It's going to be a bumpy ride, we accept that. But as a nation, if we're all pulling together, that bumpy ride can get then get easier. Boris <laughs> promised to deliver Brexit. He promised to deliver what the people voted for, what the people want. So that's why I supported Boris. The promise of an oven-ready Brexit irresistible for many former Labour voters. But Brexit just the starter. Voters want more. Now they've got a foothold in the North East to make it their own. But the only way they can make it their own is if they deliver in the, in the different constituencies. People here finding the tribalism of our politics distasteful. Were you finding all of the rowing back in Westminster? Dreadful. Was it? Yes. Yes, it really is. They were like kids, really. Instead of all getting together and sorting it out. Were you surprised that Bishop Auckland was won Very by the Conservative by, let's just remember, 8,000 votes? Very surprised, because yeah. we used to say if you put your sheep in and put Labour on, it would get in. It's always been Labour, Yeah. as long as I can remember. What did you think of Jeremy Corbyn? <laughs> Don't mention his name. Don't mention his name. What did you think of him? I, I don't think he was the right one yeah. for the Labour at yeah. all. Do you think if they get the right leader, they could win Bishop Auckland back? Not very quickly. Not very quickly. No.
Next door in Durham Northwest, another shot win for the Tories. Come on, beautiful. The mines are long gone. People here finding new ways to make a living. You've got Anna Maria there. Anna Maria. You've got Anna Maria. I've got Tallulah greedy guts at the back. That greedy is it. Greedy guts. Come on then. <laughs> Come on then, people. Shane Come says Labour are detached from the realities of rural life. Were you surprised that the Conservatives won the election like they did? Not really. Not really. Um, I mean, I've always voted Labour all my life, but this year I, I, I didn't. They, they were saying they were going to promise this, that and the other, and they were going to put more money into school services, national health, things like that. And when they were saying where it's going to come from, they couldn't possibly they couldn't possibly give you the money that they were promising for mm. all these little rural villages and I think people have just had enough. What would you like for your community in the next five years? I want them to bring rural villages and rural areas up to speed with everybody else, make sure that they have got the, even just the basics. Labour unconvincing, the Tories too with much to prove. I think they're going to have to prove themselves in the next few years to yeah. see if see if they're going they are going to uphold you know their, their policies and what they've put forward. Um, if not then I think the people might go back and vote again Labour. The new MP here knows he'll have to build on his success if he wants to repeat it. Um, you know, this is never going to be taken for granted. This is never going to be a safe Conservative seat. I'm going to have to fight here every time for votes. And I think that's one of the things that's has changed here, is that people can now see a, an MP it's, really fighting. It's, it's a victory, but it feels like a fragile victory. Is that fair? I think, it's, it's a, as the Prime Minister said, some people lent us their votes to the election, some people took a punt this time on the Conservatives, thinking, saying, will you go forwards, will you deliver for us? And I think they're going to want to see that delivery in a few years' time. You can drive west right across the Pennines and down to the sea without passing through Labour land. After six consecutive Labour wins, this time Blackpool South turned blue too. This man worked on Labour's losing campaign. What was the message you were getting back from voters? Uh, I mean, there was two things mainly. It was um, an issue of leadership, but also the, the Brexit issue, really. We couldn't get away, get, get away from it, really. From Blythe to Blackpool, voters turned Tory because they wanted a government of Prime Minister who can deliver. Yes, they turned to Boris Johnson because of Brexit, but they also turned away from Jeremy Corbyn because of leadership. He is then a Prime Minister, if you like, on probation with his new supporters. But Boris Johnson now has the chance to turn a toehold in places like this into a real foothold if he delivers on those election promises. For now, Mr Johnson's in the driving seat. Labour with a very long road back. But Brexit scrambled party political identities in this election. And what turned from red to blue could easily turn back again. Mr Johnson has a five-year term, but there is still all to play for and plenty to lose. Beth Rigby, Sky News. When you think of traditional Labour constituencies, they don't get much redder than Sedgefield in County Durham. But the people here, like so many across the North East's Labour heartlands, have finally fallen out of love with the party. My vote was more to do with not trusting that his sums were all going to add up Jeremy with all Corbyn. the promises with Jeremy Corbyn, yeah. Why couldn't you vote for Labour? Because of Jeremy Corbyn. He's gone way away from my principles as a, as a Labour voter. I voted Conservative purely because I think Boris will be able to get us out of the EU. I have voted Labour in the past, but this time I voted Conservative. Um, I don't like Jeremy Corbyn, um, and I definitely wanted to leave. The famous Trimden Labour Club in Sedgefield played host to many political milestones in Tony Blair's career. And this is it today. The club closed down in 2010 and is now a carpet shop. This constituency may have been continuously Labour since 1935, but the indelible red ink that has marked much of the landscape here has been fading away for some time. In Labour's heyday here, the then American President George Bush once ate fish and chips with Tony Blair in the Duncow pub. A local political journalist who was here in the pub that day told me the fact that Sedgefield has deserted Labour is momentous. 
here in the northeast, I think, for um, uh, people who have been looking to move away from Labour for a number of years, but they've never quite managed to bring themselves to vote Conservative because their grandparents would be spinning in their grave if they did. But this time, when you've got two pretty unpopular leaders, as they narrowed down, as that decision was made in the polling booth, they just couldn't bring themselves to vote for Jeremy Corbyn. But they also had this warning. He's got to get on with it now. He's made so many uh, promises, hasn't he? And uh, well, let's hope he can get most of them done. Conservatives will realise that it's only it's only till the next time if they don't do anything, the Labour voters will go back to Labour. So Sedgefield is keen to remind the Prime Minister that unless he proves himself worthy of their vote with real change in the North East, it may only be a temporary situation. Catherine Jacob, 5 News, Sedgefield. Once these places have gone, and this will go in the next few years, it'll be knocked down and houses built, uh, and they'll never come back. No one will ever build a place like this again. Welcome to Grassmoor in North East Derbyshire. Since 1935, this constituency has been Labour red, until 2017, when it turned blue. Mining, like the Labour Party, used to be in this constituency's blood. But the pits are long since closed and there's a new political movement in town. Brexit. In fact, this area is one of the highest Leave votes in the country. And the incumbent MP, Conservative Lee Rowley, who co-chairs a Thatcherite think tank, well, his aunt used to be secretary to Arthur Scargill. And that's not even the tenth strangest thing about this general election. We're at the Working Men's Club on karaoke night to try to understand why the vote here has changed and also speak to one of the people that runs it. His dad used to work in a mine from the age of 14, and Richard, well, he's been a member here since he was 18 years old. And if you're lucky, maybe you'll see us have a little croon. Just a quick one, guys. Hands up if you're excited about the general election. <laughs> Just you and me, then. Why is there one? Monday night was bingo night, and that's all they do, was bingo. Yeah. And all three rooms were full of You're people kidding. playing the bingo. Wow. Now we're lucky to get 20 in the rooms we've just been through. Mm. And that's sign of the times, I'm afraid. It's too big. Much, much too big. Uh, but there's nothing we can do with it. We've got it and that. <laughs> we've got to deal with it. Back in the day when it was full every night, you mm. know. We've got the pit, we've got the coking plant, we've got the big engineering people. All employing thousands of men. All them jobs have gone. And people just don't come out like they used to. They've got the Tesco beer, they've got the Netflix, they've got their Xboxes, they've got... Yeah. And they've got other forms of entertainment. You see, when I was 18, I couldn't wait to be a member at club. I can go in club now. Yeah. Uh, but people don't think like that anymore. They, they prefer to stay in. Socialising's died. Socialising's on Facebook, isn't it? Yeah. That's where people saw it, and it's so sad. Hi, mate. Did you do a Guinness? Uh, I think not, I don't think so. You know, don't get me on to workers' rights and things like that. Yeah. That's, that's why I voted Remain, and the only reason I voted Remain, because the benefits we were getting out of Europe as, as working class, we'd have never got under a Tory government. And it would be questionable if, we, if we'd have gone that far under a Labour government. Mm. Yeah. It's not like it used to be. And I'm going, to go, I'm going to blame Tony Blair a little bit of this, especially from a political angle. Mm. I interviewed the chairman of the Conservative Party a couple of weeks ago, James Cleverley. Right, yeah. And he, yeah. Made, he made the case to me, he said to me, that he believes the Conservative Party is the party of the working class. He thinks that the Conservatives... <sighs> where, where, where does austerity come from then? Why did we have to go through austerity to pay for uh, American bankers' toxic debts? Why did the working class have to pay for that? You know, could anybody explain that to me? Because no one has yet. While, while the unemployed, the disabled, the, you know, the unfortunate in society have been persecuted because greedy American bankers. And that's where it stemmed from. And our idiots down in the city bought this toxic debt. I mean, Gordon Brown didn't do us any favours mm. by trying to 
trying to appease the city. I can see his reasons for doing it, but it was those that caused the problem. And, <laughs> it's getting, and we had to pick up the tab. You're getting quite irritated about this. Yeah, you? yeah, I, I don't like, I don't bug, like, yeah. Bugbear for you. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm financially okay. I'm, yeah. I'm, but there's a lot of people that, bedroom tags, what's all that about? Who ever dreamt, who in the right mind would ever dream that up? Yeah. Bedroom tax, come on. That is the lowest of the low. Love is all I have How did this former Labour stronghold go, Tory? I'm struggling to explain why, but Maggie May. Oh, Maggie, I wish I'd never seen your face. You made a first class fool out of me. I'm as blind as a fool can be. You stole my heart, but I love you anyway. And that's enough of that. 90 years old and still going strong, but the absence of youth is palpable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Maureen over there, she was a, uh, runs what they call a friendship club, where 20 odd old people, old people, she'll kill me. She, 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 cut, cut. Uh, <laughs> uh, they've got a little club and they go and play the dominoes and the, the, the cards and they, they meet each other once a week mm -hmm. and they go on trips and it's brilliant. Jack is involved with community centre where she gets. Uh, discos organised and things like that, and it's all for community. She, they get nothing out of it. In the last general election, this was a Labour. This was a Labour seat, 1935 yes. until 2017. We could not believe it when we lost it. He's going to increase his majority at this election. You think? I'm confident. And do you think that's because of the Conservative Party's stance on Brexit? No. Why? Because he's a good constituency MP, mm. and it. It's like a lot of two-faced. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, 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 it's a young lad. He's very pleasant to talk to, and he says what people want to hear. Right. And he convinces people uh, that he'll he'll go down that route. Is Jeremy Corbyn popular around here? No. No. No, because they read Sun, and they believe what they read in Sun. Unfortunately, they can't see through uh, the Tory press. I'm not saying I'm a, but even BBC are so biased; it's unbelievable. It looks like it's paining you to say this, to be Richard. Yeah, it's, but you can't do anything about it unless you do what Tony Blair did and got him in. I'm pulling Tony Blair down again. Mm. And I don't want to, yeah. because I was 100% behind him when he was prime minister, and I thought he was a great prime minister. All right, the right was proved a bit mm. iffy. <laughs> <laughs> Just a touch. Just a tad. Mm. Oh, it's only the same as Maggie's Falklands. Yep. That one. And Belgrano. Mm. But that, That's that a war one. crime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that one, that election. Yeah. Gotcha uh, on the front of the sun. Did, yeah, 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 gotcha. They were going back to bloody port. Mm. Right, I'm going. Richard, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm going. I'm going to I really appreciate karaoke. you stopping to talk to us, mate. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, what do you want to take those eyes of me for? If they don't mean what they say. If they don't mean doobie doobie do what they say. Doobie doobie do what we do, we do, we do what we do, we do, we do. Oh, do what we do, we do, we do what we do, we do, we do what. The story of this seat tells one of the biggest stories of the election. The Conservative Party candidate, 21,791. No, I don't think it is a surprise really, is it? I think um, we needed a change. I'm glad um, we've got a majority. Yeah. 
it needs to improve. <laughs> it really does, because they don't cater to everyone else, they just cater to the older versions. They need to cater to the younger generations, you know. Bolsover in Derbyshire is made up of former pit villages. The seat had been Labour since it was created and held by lifelong socialist Dennis Skinner for 45 years. It were only £700 a time when Jim Callaghan were in it. This time it went Conservative. And I do hereby declare that Mark Peter Fletcher is elected to serve as Member of Parliament for the constituency of Bolsover. 34-year-old Mark Fletcher is the constituency's first ever Tory MP. We spoke to him just before he set off for his House of Commons induction on Sunday afternoon. We were talking to predominantly Labour voters um, historically, um, but we also we found you know, this was an election that was very unusual because there are people who supported the Conservative Party here for 30 years who didn't necessarily support our position on Brexit and so they were going elsewhere. So it wasn't like you could define it by any previous election. Yeah, what, what were they saying when you were knocking on Labour doors in Labour areas? Um, well, the overwhelming message was that the values of this Labour Party have strayed a long way from working class towns in the North and in the Midlands. You know, it's a sort of, the Labour Party over the last few years has become a party for cities and students, and that was felt very acutely here. A 10 minute drive away to the south of the constituency is the pit village of Shirebrook, where in September, we spoke to retired miner and staunch Labour man Trev Toon. It was clear then the party could be in trouble here. Why are so many traditional Labour supporters thinking of either voting for Farage or Boris Johnson? It's immigration. Top and bottom on it, it's immigration. Hi Trev. All right. Nice to see you again. Right. How are you feeling after Thursday? Devastated. Yeah. Definitely. Come on in. Trev voted Labour and still believes in the Corbyn project. Last time I was here, you didn't think that enough people around here, former miners, etc., would switch over to the Tories, but they, they, no, seem, no. they seem to have done that, so what happened? It's a, it's a Brexit vote, and the making it, we'll get Brexit, and people around here saying it, and we're going to be great. It was, we'll want to get out, don't we? The sooner we're better. How much of a problem was, was Jeremy Corbyn around here? I think there was a problem. It all boils down to leadership. It's the same as anything. I like them as a man. I like Jeremy. I think he's got principles, but he's had two attempts. We've got to move on. Let's a new broom sweeps clean. <laughs> Bolsover Town Centre on a Sunday afternoon. Talking to people here, Brexit does come up. Lee is a metal worker in a local foundry. Last Thursday, for the first time in his life, he chose not to vote Labour. It pains me to say that I voted for Brexit Party. I couldn't vote Conservative, I just wanted Brexit Party. Just so we come out and we could start ruling ourselves. And how come you went for Brexit Party and not for Conservatives? Uh, I don't believe in, I can't vote, I, I live in Chesterfield, can't vote Conservatives. It's against my religion, my grandfather had turned over in his grave if I ever voted for Conservatives. But Brexit were to get us out. But does Brexit alone explain why Labour has lost more than 8,000 votes here since the last election just two years ago? We needed a change. I'm glad uh, we've got a majority. Yeah. I mean, whether you like Boris or not, whether you like their manifesto or not, we've got a majority and I think that's been holding English politics back for a while. So that's at least one positive. Mm. Like broadband, yeah. It'd be nice to have free broadband, but it's not an essential. I mean... Not when you're a young no. family. Yes, and you've got, obviously, got priorities and stuff like that. To be taking more money off of something so silly as broadband, I think there's other things in the world that need to be prioritised. Like Out of loyalty, Julie did back Labour's Dennis Skinner but she says her family couldn't vote for the party this time. And my dad's an ex-miner and he voted Conservative this time as well. First time? Yeah. No. Oh, no, not no, the no. first time, not the first time, but in recent years, yeah. And um, both my 
son's age, well, my son's age 16, not old enough to vote, but he's a young Conservative. <laughs> and my older son's Conservative as well, so... So what's happening then in places like this that have always been Labour and now your dad's going... To... I think it's Jeremy Corbyn. I don't think they actually like him that much. Uh, they haven't got a lot of faith in him, so... And is it him or is it his policies? I think it's him. Uh, it's such a massive shock in Bolsover that, uh, that Dennis has gone, so I, I'm very sad about that. Many in the party worry Labour's disconnect from its working class base runs deeper than just Brexit. The key question will be whether voters in places like Bolsover have temporarily lent the Tories their support or whether the whole electoral map has just been redrawn. In the general election, the blue tide of Tory gains lapped up to the borders of Hartlepool but didn't cross them. It couldn't happen here, some said. Labour, since the seat was created. But will it stay that way? All my life I've been Labour. Never voted for anyone else. Even in the last election? In the last election I but did. But this time you're wavering? Yeah, I certainly am. I would have voted Tory. Is that a first time for you? Yes. So you didn't even in the general election vote for Boris no. Johnson, but this time you are? Yeah. Would you normally be Labour? Um, normally, yeah. Yeah. But this time you're not sure? Not sure this time. One of Hartlepool's last remaining steelworks, Liberty, is under threat. Labour says it would do whatever it takes to save it. But that messaging isn't lapped up the way it used to be. And Labour isn't certain to hold this seat. People have no love for the Tories here, though. I'm really clear about that as well. The, um, when you listen to people on the doorstep, they can see that neck. there's been... They can see that there's been. Well, they can see that there's been. There's been a. There's been 11 years of, of of Tory decline in Hartlepool, and they can see that during that time, there's a timeline here where they can see jobs ebbing away from the town. We've lost. So why is it one, neck and neck? We've lost 1,600 manufacturing jobs from this town in the last five years. So what's your explanation for why they're even thinking of voting for Boris Johnson's well, candidate? I think you can never tell people in Hartlepool what to do, and people will make up their own minds. Labour's hoping that its party machine will pull out the vote. But Labour MPs who've been dragooned up to help say a bond with many voters round here has been broken. And the Tory message that a vote for them will bring jobs and investment to the area is, they say, landing with some voters. So you're torn between Labour and the Conservatives? I'm torn. <laughs> What's weighing, what sort of issues are you weighing up? What sort of... What, what, who's going to do the best for the town and what's jobs, jobs worth, that type of thing. Bringing money here, investment. Bringing money in, investment. But you'd normally be Labour. Yes. You didn't even vote for them last time round, the general election. The Tories, Boris Johnson. No. But this time you might? I might. I do, might. Do you think a lot of other people are in the same place? Yes, I do. Reform UK, successor to the Brexit party, say the Tories are trying to buy the voters here. Their whole campaign message is if you uh, vote for the Tory MP and you get a Tory MP, somehow you'll get the investment as being a Tory you'll get MP. Money and jobs. Yeah, so it's, it's almost we'll like a, a threat. It's almost like a threat, really, to the people of Hartley. If you don't, you won't. If get you them. don't, you won't get it. And that is just completely wrong. People say we're only going to get our, some, our hands on some of the pie if we have a Tory MP. Well, I don't think that's because we're Conservatives. I think it's because we work more. We're very proactive and we, we go out and fight for people. Some people look around and they think there's, a, there's, some, there's something sort of transactional going on here. You get a Conservative MP and, yeah, you get a bit of extra money from the, the new fund. The Boris Johnson makes sure you're, you're looked after with a bit of cash. The fund is there for everybody to Yes, access. but it's going more to Tory MPs. Well, perhaps MPs. that's because we fight for it more. Some people would say that might not be what's going on behind the scenes, and it's pork barrel politics. Well, they can say what they want. I'm standing in the Hartlepool by-election for the Liberal Democrats. All oh, right. Um, and I've never voted for Liberal Democrats. Have you not? He probably shouldn't sound so surprised. This is pretty tough terrain for the Lib Dems, and the referendum on EU membership made it even tougher. This area voted nearly 70% for Brexit, and yours was the party trying to frustrate that happening I think the how does that go down the, the debate has moved on you know they've we forgiven are, you or forgotten the, the debate has moved on you know we uh, we need to be united we're all Hartley Pudlians 
This seat was such a Leave stronghold that at the general election a quarter of votes here went to the Brexit party. Other parties are now eyeing that carcass. The Brexit party in its prime got about two thirds of its support from former Labour supporters, about a third from former Conservative supporters. Where is that support going now, without the Brexit party there and its successor party struggling for profile? Pollsters think it's breaking in the opposite proportions. Two thirds of former Brexit party supporters are going off to the Conservatives, a third to Labour. If that's right, in a seat like Hartlepool, it could make all the difference. I've always been a Labour voter, always. And now? No, I go Conservative. Thank you very much. Concepts all the way now. If the Tories did win here, it would send shockwaves through Labour. The party, still reeling from its worst general election results since 1935, would be left wondering if still more heartlands could be lost. Gary Gibbon, Channel 4 News, Hartlepool. This is big. A colossal win in Hartlepool for the Conservatives and Boris Johnson. Another blue brick in what used to be Labour's red wall. And the Tories are building right across the country. <laughs> Big boss man. A normal sized boss man here too. He thinks he knows what voters want. I think what the, this uh, election shows is that uh, people want a, a party and a government that is focused on them, focused on delivering change and that's what uh, Jill has been campaigning on and that's why I, I, I go on, uh, Beth, about the advantages of the, of the things that we're doing. You said in the 2019, you, after the 2019 elections, people in the Red Wall had lent you their vote. Do you think now something else has happened, this is a deeper shift? Is that your hope? Well, I hope that I think that what I think what happened in, in 2019 was that people mandated us to get Brexit done and to, to begin the process of uniting and, and levelling up. And I think that what's happened now is they can see we did get Brexit done, and to a certain extent they can see that we delivered uh, on that. And I think what people want us to do now is to get on with delivering on everything else. Eleven years into power, the Conservatives still eating into Labour's territory. And now David Ferguson has been duly elected. Win in Northumberland in the northeast. Dudley, Redditch, Nuneaton in the West Midlands. Ben Houchen, the Conservative Party candidate, is duly elected as mayor for the Tees Valley Combined Authority. Thank you. And holding the Tees Valley mayoralty with an increased margin. Places Labour was supposed to be fighting back. These defeats really hurt. None more so than in Hartlepool. People here had voted Labour for over six decades, but no more. Boris Johnson's Brexit dividend is still paying out, not just here, but across the country. From Northumberland to Nuneaton, the Conservative vote share went up the most in areas that voted decisively to leave. Votes lent in 2019 now being freely given. But it suggests something more than just Brexit too, something more profound about the redrawing of our political map. Over the past couple of decades, working class voters have gradually turned away from Labour. England has gradually turned blue in all but our major cities, while in Scotland, people have turned to the SNP and it all leaves Labour at a loss. Whilst the PM tours new Conservative territory for the Labour leader, nowhere to go but the office. I'm bitterly disappointed in the results. Um, and, you know, I take full responsibility for the results. And I will take full responsibility for fixing things. We have changed as a party, but we haven't set out a strong enough case to the country. Very often we've been talking to ourselves instead of to the country, and we've lost the trust of working people, particularly in places like Hartlepool. I intend to do whatever is necessary to fix that. But not everyone in the Labour Party agrees on what the fix is. Sir Keir now under pressure to do things very differently. It's a pretty disastrous result. It's one that we were expecting. And really, Keir now has to learn lessons from it. He has to reset the button, press the reset button, so that he can go back to the very issues that he was elected to lead the Labour Party on, which were radical policies. 
Keir Starmer has always said he could turn around Labour's fortunes in time for the next election, but that journey yet to even get going. These results cause for real alarm. The results of the Hartlepool by-election this morning represent an earthquake in the political landscape. The Conservatives are celebrating a colossal win, but for Labour it represents a serious setback. Sir Keir Starmer and his key allies will be licking their wounds this morning and thinking about the questions it poses to his leadership in the weeks and months ahead. Thank you very much for putting your faith in me. Keir Starmer is really facing an onslaught. On the centre, we've heard the likes of Peter Mandelson, who of course used to represent Hartlepool. He had a majority of 17,500 back in the day. It was a real safe seat, so we can see how far um, the constituency has come since the era of New Labour. Peter Mandelson has ascribed the disastrous results to the two Cs, Covid and Corbyn. He says that the pandemic means that the population has been focused on nothing else but the virus for the past year and that hasn't allowed Keir Starmer to really have any sort of platform to talk about um, Labour policies or how the party is changing. Then on the left of the party, Keir Starmer is hearing the exact opposite. The likes of Momentum have said that he needs to go in a totally new direction, much further to the left. We've heard other sort of loyal foot soldiers of Corbyn, like Richard Bergen, Diane Abbott, also come out this morning saying that there needs to be a change of strategy from Labour and it really needs to move towards a more socialist position. I think we're going to see two things in the days ahead. One is a very narrow forensic dissection of mistakes made in the strategy for the by-election. And the second is wider soul searching about Labour's message to the public at large. Secondly, there are other insiders in Labour who are really banging their heads against the wall that the party, which it was in the gift of Labour to choose the timing of this by-election, why to time it alongside a mayoral contest in which the local mayor, the Conservative candidate, Ben Houchen, was so popular. That means that many Conservatives who wanted to come out and vote for the mayor would also already be at the polling station and would therefore tick the Conservative uh, box on the ballot when it came to the MP contest. I think there is something in that. Defenders of that strategy in Labour say the party didn't really have enough money um, to campaign on two different fronts for two different dates and it made sense financially to throw it all into the same leaflets promoting an MP candidate, a mayoral candidate. These missteps will give way to much bigger questions about Keir Starmer's strategy and his cut through with the public. His allies are out in force this morning saying that he hasn't had enough time to really rebuild trust with the public following the Corbyn defeat of 2019, which was Labour's worst result since 1935. I think what we've seen in, in Hartlepool really speaks to major problems ahead for Labour. In recent weeks ahead of the poll, we'd already seen um, opinion surveys suggesting that the party was losing traction with C2DE voters, those on the lower end of the socioeconomic spectrum, i.e. The, the blue collar workers who are the traditional um, ballast of Labour's vote. If it's the case the Conservatives are really sweeping up um, that vote across England, then I think that is a major problem for the party. There are people out this morning saying that the plight facing Labour is worse than the 1980s, where some people thought the party was in terminal decline. Others in recent weeks have been arguing that it's a stranger bind that the party's in. It's in this situation where it's too strong to die, but it's too weak to win. And so there is the sort of sense that unless they change strategy and really come up with something um, more eye-catching to voters, that they will limp on, but without kind of ever coming to victory, at least in the short to medium term. I think Sir Keir Starmer faces a big challenge ahead on several fronts. I think on personnel there is a sense that his current shadow cabinet lacks visibility and real big hitters, so I think we're likely to see a reshuffle in the weeks ahead for him to try and reset his leadership, perhaps bring on board some of those well-known high-profile MPs that are currently on his back benches, perhaps Yvette Cooper, perhaps Hilary Benn. I also think strategy-wise they'll really need to think about the policies that can try and win back um, some of those voters uh, in England in rural and suburban communities to make sure that they haven't just backed themselves into a corner where the only place they're winning is in cities.